Let me just say a quick note for, again, Whoa. for the... Whoa. I mean, in some ways it's, it's like... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, clearly, clearly I could have just given you the answer. Like, well, actually, you already know what the answer is, right? Um, I guess I could have gone a step further. And you remember how we developed this equation? You remember how we developed that, right? And that kind of... That doesn't snap in immediately. Like, most people don't... Oh, yes! Obviously, it's R and HX, right? Like, we needed to workshop that a little bit to understand what was going on. Now... The formation of this is kind of a critical step, and so it is over here. Now, there's a variety of different paths that people have taken. From what I can see, at least on your initial drawings, no one's initial drawing is wrong, right? Because you've identified the critical thing, which is that to get a cone, the area that you're going to rotate around an axis is a triangle. That gives you a cone. A cone. I think everyone knows, in order to get a sphere, the area that you're going to rotate is a... It's a circle or a semicircle. As you'll see in a second, it actually doesn't matter which one we do. But you've got the um, you've got the cross section right. Okay, so that's good. However, most of you have sort of come awry in the algebra that ensues because some of you have picked a harder version rather than an easier one. So here's the way I'm going to go about it. We want a circle of some kind. What is the very simplest circle you can think of that we can graph the on the Cartesian? The unit circle is the simplest circle, right? It's um, x squared plus y squared equals 1, right? That's a great place to start. Everything about this is simple, okay? Center of the origin, radius 1. Now, I want this to be somewhat more versatile than a radius of 1 because I want any radius, right? So you only have to adjust the equation of the unit circle a teeny bit in order to get a radius, a uh, circle of any radius. How do you adjust it? One becomes r squared. Yeah, very good. In fact, that, r, that one is actually one squared, right? And that's what the radius is. In order to have any arbitrary radius, you just change it to r squared, okay? Now, I have been taking everything as like a, as a function, right? x squared plus y squared equals r squared is not a function, okay? But if I want it to be a function, for example, if I just want the top half, right? What would the equation of this be? How would I get it? Yeah. Square root of r squared minus x squared. Very good. You can see if you take this equation up here, right? And you just rearrange it a little bit. To get y, you take the square root of both sides. You've got a plus case and a negative case, which is on the bottom. Okay? Now, that's fine. That's, what, that's the way I would deal with this. However, you might notice, right? If I ended up taking the whole thing, I mean, I do want a sphere after all, okay? The, the um, equation of the whole thing is this. Now, this actually ends up being very useful to us because in order to get a volume, right, in order to get a volume, our formula is from a to b of pi y squared dx because I'm choosing to rotate it around the x-axis, right? Hold on. y squared? Pi y squared? I have a y squared right there. No taking square roots or anything required, right? So you can see from that line, all I need to do is just rearrange ever so slightly to do that, which of course you could have gotten from that as well. But like, I mean, it's kind of like, yes, let's take the square root and then square it, right? Like, you know, you've got y squared already, you might as well, okay? Now, because it's a circle with radius r, right? My boundaries are negative r and r. And now I'm ready to form my integral, right? I just say the volume is equal to, got my boundaries. Now I've got y squared right there. Don't need to square this again. That's already been squared. What's the, what's the primitive? Yeah. R squared x minus x cubed over 3. Very good. Now, by the way, at this point, at this point, by the way, I actually could have made things a little bit easier for me this step before, because this semicircle here, right, it has symmetry I can take advantage of, right? Like, I could do this Rather than forming this integral, I could say, I'll do it in another color. I could say because those two sides are symmetrical, this is the same as double from naught to r of the same integral, right? Do you agree with that? That would have worked just fine, okay? And in fact, because there's a zero there, that will almost certainly be easier to evaluate. However, I'm just going to follow up with this because this is the path that the majority of you have taken, just so you can see how the algebra pans out. Okay. Arithmetic, rather. Okay, I've got my pi out the front. Thank you, Mark. And then when I evaluate, it's actually pretty simple, right? You end up getting a whole bunch of r cubed. You get r cubed out the front, take away r cubed on 3. There's your upper boundary. Right? 
And then what you subtract is, now just watch out for your signs, okay? Watch out for your signs. You've got minus r cubed out the front plus r cubed on 3 because there's this negative and that negative because there's three of them. So four in total, that's why you get a plus, okay? Close brackets. Okay. Now that looks a little bit weird. Maybe for some of you it's not what you expected. Some of you looked at that and you're like, something's wrong, right? Something is not wrong. Just be patient with it. Um, this guy at the front, right, it's something, take away a third of something, that's two thirds of something, right? Here, because, and this is the whole even function thing happening, right? This is exactly <coughs> the opposite. It's minus two r cubed on three, okay? So you can see the double negative here, you're gonna get the four on three that you were looking for, which gives our familiar old formula for volume of speed. Okay? So, so if, like, yes? Wait, isn't it like, R cubed plus R cubed is two R cubed, and then yeah. minus and minus is minus two R cubed. Did you just get six you put these two together? Yeah. yeah, that's fine, you'll get the same thing. So if you wanted to put these two together first, you would get two R cubed, then I think you're putting these two together, which would be minus 2r cubed on 3. Oh, did you just put it together? I just evaluated this first, which gave me that, and evaluated this, which gave me that. Oh. I evaluated my upper and lower boundaries together, okay? okay? But this is the same thing. Like, 2r cubed is 6r cubed on 3, okay. which is still 4 on 3. Okay? So... It's not complicated once you know the machinery and how to use it properly. How to use it properly, by the way, is the critical thing. Worth pointing out, since this is kind of a new thing for you guys, um, the volumes by integration, not on your reference sheet, right? Which is just another reason why it's really important you wrap your head around how to use these and how to use them in different cases.